So stop me if you've heard this one. Another round of fog on the way as we head into the night, especially for areas in central and eastern Kilgoland with low temperatures falling into the 20s. Out west, you might actually get a break from that. We'll still see mid-20s with partly to at times mostly clear skies. Then, yeah, fog is going to linger as we head into your day on Thursday. Already a couple of dense fog advisories in place for a small portion of Kilgoland. With the details on that, I go through the rest of your seven-day forecast all coming up. But until then, first and four starts right now. Live from Killoland Media Group, Killoland News, first at four. Super Bowl's fire rescue teams up with a local construction company to focus on safety training. Plus, the outdoor ice rinks are now open in Sioux Falls, so look at the wintertime activities in the city coming up. And what's next in the race for the Republican presidential nomination? Why some say the November ballot is already set. Good afternoon, and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. A federal jury has convicted a Rapid City man of kidnapping and carjacking. On May 6, 2022, Juan Alvarez Sorto was on the western edge of the Badlands when he threatened a man with a gun, forced the victim into the back seat, and then took off in the victim's SUV. Now, what makes this case even more unusual is that the victim turned out to be working with the FBI and the vehicle belonged to the agency. We'll look back at the crime and the eventual escape coming up tonight on Kelloland News at 10. Developing in Minnesota today, a state patrol trooper has been charged with murder in the shooting death of Ricky Cobb II during a July traffic stop. The Hennepin County attorney says trooper Ryan Londrigan faces several charges, including second degree unintentional murder in the death of Cobb. Authorities say Londrigan shot Cobb after he refused to leave his car during a stop on a Minneapolis freeway. A Sioux Falls construction company is and a Sioux Falls Fire Rescue are working together to make sure workers are safe on the job. The Journey Group has constructed some of the largest buildings in the city, and today they teamed up with the fire department for a joint training exercise at the Sharapa 4 building, which is under construction. They simulated a fire with two construction workers trapped inside. And so when we prepare with something like this and we're partnering with the Sioux Falls Fire Rescue, it's about being prepared for a real life scenario and just making sure that we're, we're ready for the time that is real in case it ever happens. We hope it never happens, but just be prepared. Coming up tonight at 6, we're going to find out what Sioux Falls Fire Rescue gets out of an exercise like this. And for our weather today, more slick roads and gloomy yeah, out there. Yeah, kind of stuck in this gloomy pattern, Adam. Yeah, yeah no kidding. It has uh, certainly been quite the uh, murky run of weather, I guess you could say. So we've had a lot of fog to contend with over the last several days. And unfortunately, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Case in point, well, there's downtown behind me with that fog hanging over the city. 35 uh, south wind to 10 miles per hour. So we have been able to continue to effectively uh, melt away uh, another little portion of that snow. But anything that melted today will refreeze overnight. Meanwhile, a clearer view from our Fort Thompson camera, even just Dare I say a little bit of blue in the sky above? I know that's kind of a bit of a concept, East River, but yeah, we'll get there eventually. Temperatures holding in the 30s in many locations to the east, including 30 on the dot in Watertown. We're also seeing 31 up toward Aberdeen, 32 here on Mitchell and Brookings, 35 in Marshall, 33 for Worthington, but some 20s out there. Pier and Mobridge at 26 and 29 respectively. Milder though out west, 48 in Rapid City. How about 51 leading the charge up in Buffalo? We haven't had much in the way of a breeze to worry about today. It's been 5 to 10 miles per hour of a variable direction. But it's been the fog that will be the main story as we head into your day even on Thursday. For now, key phrase, there's our dense fog advisory west of Aberdeen and Redfield, including the Miller area. This is going to be a through Thursday afternoon as that January sun angle is not going to really be able to eat away at that fog very effectively. So visibility in that advisory area uh, anywhere from a quarter to a half mile or less at times and it would not surprise me at all if we had that fog advisory actually uh, spread out a little bit more to the east and then southeast as well. In fact, we already have some of those advisories down toward Valentine in eastern Cherry County. We'll go through the rest of your seven day forecast, which has at least a little bit of something to talk about as we head through the hour. Thanks, Adam. 
People are finally able to enjoy a variety of wintertime activities in Sioux Falls. Today, the city announced all six outdoor ice rinks are now open. As the weather warms back up, the city is encouraging people to get outside and enjoy. The late start of the winter uh, prevented us from starting the ice making process like we usually do in December. As we look at the upcoming forecasts, uh, 30s and 40s is not ideal um, to make ice or, to, or for the ice to remain. Great Bear Ski Valley is also fully open for skiing and tubing. Kelloland's Renee Ortiz will look into the variety of winter activities coming up at 6. And people in Minnesota are finally starting to enjoy some wintertime favorites. Uh, Derek James takes a look at how the delayed winter has impacted outdoor plans and the businesses that rely on snow and ice. Diana Klatt has the rink all to herself during this work break. As a lifelong Minnesota resident who went down to Miami to live for a year and a half, moved back in October, this winter's been very welcoming to me. <laughs> Just below the Maple Grove Central Park rink. She likes the slides and the swings. John Morissette is enjoying outdoor time on the playground with his granddaughter Ember and other family members. I would prefer more snow so we could do more things. Half a mile away, one winter option that's been delayed is taking its final shape. So we build up and then we just let Mother Nature do her thing. The work to open the ice castles has required patience and problem solving this winter. Yeah, on like a scale of one to ten, how difficult has this been? I mean, this is, this is probably a good seven. We got on site in November um, and started laying the groundwork. You know, all the irrigation and lights and things went in. Uh, and then it's just waiting for the cold. So we had a good cold snap, a short cold snap in December and we got some growth lost a little bit of it, uh, kind of worked on some other projects around, and then as soon as it got cold again, we turned the water back on. After record warmth in December, this recent cold blast of 15 days in a row below freezing and 10 below average, the ice castles are about to be up and running. Luckily, the nights are still getting down below freezing, and that's really what it takes to kind of maintain. Bullard is hoping these gorgeous blue ice castles will be open until the start of daylight saving time in March. Back at the playground, two and a half year old Ember is on what looks to be a bumpy slide into spring. In Maple Grove, Derek James, WCCO News. And the ice castles in Maple Grove opens for the season tonight. And Bullard says that the best time to come is about 30 minutes before sunset.